church. Good evening. Happy Sabbath. Uh, I would like to welcome you to our week of prayer. And as we begin our worship this evening, we'll join our voices and sing, Shine, Jesus, Shine. song will be shout to the Lord.
Our next song will be a hymn, hymn number 388, Don't Forget the Sabbath. song will be I love the thrill that I feel. While the song is sung, I would request each one of you to stand up from your seats and wish one another. Please stand. <laughs>
as we all remain standing, we'll do an action song, which is lean forward, lean backward. Our next song will be Pass It On. Thank you for your wonderful singing. Good evening and a happy Sabbath to everybody. Welcome to the last second day of the Youth Week of Prayer. Phobias. How many of you know what a phobia is? I'll tell the names of some phobia. You can guess what it is. Arachnophobia. Sorry, uh, arachnophobia. Anyone? Spiders. What about altophobia? Heights. Trypanophobia. Sorry. I'm a dentist, so we give a lot of injections. That's the clue. 
fear of injections. Today's topic is facing fear with faith. Can you guess the chapter in the Bible which is called the faith chapter? Louder please, I can't hear. Maybe. Hebrews 11. Shall we go to Hebrews 11? Verses 1. I am reading from the NIV, which says, Now faith is the confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Let this sink in for a moment. And to share more about this, we'll have Titus coming in a little later on. But as we dwell on these topics over the whole week, I hope that each of these topics has been beneficial to you. With this, we will begin our program by standing up and singing together hymn number 590, Trust and Obey. Let's all rise.
Shall we all bow down our head, bow down our heads for prayer? Our dear, most gracious Father, Lord, we thank you so much for this evening that you have added in our lives, especially this wonderful Sabbath evening, dear Lord. Thank you so much for the safety that you've given us all throughout the past week and giving us this one more privilege and opportunity where we could come at your feet, praising and glorifying and honoring your name. Lord in heaven, at this time we pray for the program that has been prepared, dear Father. Lord in heaven, may this program be uh, according to your will and wish, dear Father. As we dwell delve into the topic faith, dear Father, help us to understand about the faith and be with the speaker that he speaks, dear Lord, dear Father. Be with us for throughout this program and may we be blessed with this program. As a few mercies in your holy name, Amen. Good evening, everyone. Happy Sabbath. How was your week? OK, I got the answer. So I assume that uh, you had a wonderful week. Uh, so the whole week, so far, we had every evening come to church. And uh, we were here. Showing up in our cities and our church on campus. So, this very Sabbath evening, the title of my message is Facing Fear in Your City. Facing Fear in Your City. How many of you remember the scripture reading? Can you at least name the book? Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1. So what does it say? Okay, what does it say? Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Okay, so before I go with the actual message, I want three volunteers, three volunteers to walk up. Now, I know you are all enthusiastic and you are keen to come here. But I would change, I would call out people, okay? For a change, let me call out people, right? So I would call uh, uh, the youngest amongst us. Auntie here, can you please come? I know. Please. Okay. Uh, I would also like to call. Uh, I'm looking for a face who, who is not seen on the stage. Ho, can you please come here? You didn't expect that. Okay, please help me with that. Uh, please come here. Auntie, can you please come here? Aksha, can you also come? Okay, so I want uh, the youth of a church to help me with this, sort of, this demonstration, yeah? Uh, this way, this side, please. To the right, right, right. Thank you. Three, another, hope, please. So we've got three people. 
And now there could be a question, why only girls and ladies, right? So let me call another person. Uh, maybe uh, the shortest among us, Ronald. Can you please walk up? Thank you. So I want, uh, you can go there, please. I want a uh, few of you to help. So uh, Cadwin and uh, Emmanuel, do you have a few notice board pins, right? Can you throw it on this? Just scatter it around, yeah. These are pins, literal pins. The reason why there's paper is because while picking it up, it has to be easy, right? It's literal pins. I want you to scatter the, them. Yeah. Okay. All three of you, can you see this? All four of you, sorry, Ron. <laughs> okay, all four of you, can you see this? The task is very simple. You have to cross from point A to point B. Okay, how will you cross? Simple, right? There is a twist. You will be, you will be blindfolded, okay? And after you being blindfolded, we will still scatter the pins and you will be uh, wearing no footwear. Okay? Are you with me? Yes? Okay, very good. They're brave enough. Okay, please uh, remove your footwear. And I request you all to please uh, help them blind get blindfolded. Uh, maybe, uh, Michelle, you can also help just to save time. Can you please help them blindfold? Maybe Manuel, you can also help. I will tell you, the instruction is not over yet. So there was one question which was asked, who would be giving me the direction? Okay, that's a valid question. What do you say? Is it a valid question? Yes, no? Yes, it is indeed. Right? Ron, are you able to see me? Thank you. I trust you. Okay. Uh, please scatter all the pins. Just push it around. Yeah. Okay, footwear out. Okay, we would like to have one person to start with. It's scattered, and let me tell you, there are no instructions given to you. No instructions, no guidance. You have to make a point to reach this part of the stage. Okay, who would like to go first, Ron? You have to manage to cross the hurdles which you see here, which are pins. The notice board pins or ball pins or pointed pins. And you should not step over it. You may start, please. No, no direction, no help. Okay, Ron, I would like you to stop here. Are you are you confident that you'll be able to cross? No. No? Are you, are you scared where you'll step over the pin and the pin will prick you? Yes. Yes? Okay, Ron, thank you. Can you go back, go back to your place, please? Can I have the next person? Auntie? No help, please. Okay, you can let her go. Okay, I would ask you to stop here. Are you scared? No. No? <laughs> Are you sure that you will not step on the pin? I already did one. You already did. So she's disqualified. <laughs> Thank you. I don't want you to get... Okay. She might get pricked. Or she will be pricked, obviously. But please observe what has happened here. Okay. Thank you, Ho. You might go back to your place. You can unfold yourself. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank you all. Aksha, I will call you back later. Okay, you can go back to your place, please. 
Now, what did we try to understand from here? You can leave it here. It's okay. It's all on the side. Thanks, Kevin and uh, Emmanuel. What did we try to do here? I'm really sorry the cameraman has to be with me because I'm, I'm pacing. Uh, so what did we try to do here? What did we see people going through or what sort of experience were they going through? Fear? I was happy that auntie said no fear. Okay, maybe she was at the urge of, uh, at the urge of crossing one more hurdle, that is one more stepping onto one more pin, all right? But we didn't want to go for, we didn't want you to go there. Fear. Now, if you don't mind me asking your age, if you don't mind, I am I'm not supposed to ask ladies age, but if you're okay, can you please tell me until what's your age? 52, thank you. Uh, I'm sorry, if you are willing to tell, you can please tell me. Between 18 and 25, that range, ho? Okay, I will assume between 18 and 25. Ron, 32. Now, the common thing that we see here is fear. No matter what the age was, but fear was common. Right, the fear was common. Now, the reason why I wanted or I wanted to do this demonstration or demonstrate this was because I wanted to tell fear is experienced by everyone, regardless of the age. And I don't have to emphasize on it, we just witnessed it. Now, Franklin D. Roosevelt, he was a president, he was an elected president, a US president, on March 4th, 1933, a wonderful speech which shook the world, okay, which happened to be the Great Depression stage at that moment because there was financial crisis. 25% of all workers had lost their job. 37% of all non-farm workers had completely lost their homes and their farm. Some people starved, many lost their farms, and they were deciding to end their life. That's when this person, the president of US, he says, what does it say? He says, the only thing we have to fear is what? The only thing that we have to fear is fear itself, right? So he says this, and if you see the articles and the videos, uh, I was, when I was preparing for this message, I was trying to research on this uh, per particular person, and I got to see the video as well, though it isn't clear, the uh, voice isn't clear, the sound, but I, I, do underst I do understood what he was trying to say, and I do, I do understand the emotions that was going around when he was giving the speech. What does fear do? You all can talk to me. This is a, you know, a, a question thrown at the congregation. What does fear do? Yes, you're right. Fear makes you keep calm, like the way you are. What else? It makes you think rationally, then irrational, you get irrational, okay, then. Very good, you lose confidence. This happens with the kids, right? When they have exams, what happens? There's something called exam fever, right? And there are people when uh, being in sports, uh, uh, I, I, uh, I love playing games and sports. So there were my team members who, uh, who were nervous and to face the opponent. There were a few people, a uh, few uh, players, who would have this urge of urination. Okay? So we, we have to enter the field, enter the football field. They say, okay, give me some time. I have to come back. 
Right? There are various ways. Now, fear is our number one enemy. Fear is our number one enemy. Fear is a monster that sends shivers down your spine. Right? At times, you, you, you start sweating. At times, you start... I'm not sweating because I'm scared. I'm sweating because of the weather. <laughs> okay? Okay? So, you, you sweat. Your palms get sweaty. Right? Fear is a thief that steals your thoughts and hijacks your dreams and your willpower. It makes you forget what you know and lose sight of what you are not. Exam. So you have studied whole night. Right? You have studied the whole year. But when it's on the examination day, you go blank. It makes you feel out of control and that you can never regain it. Distrust the very people you should trust without hesitation. How many times you would have come across a situation where you, would have, you are in a situation and then the person, you don't know whether the person is in favor of you or against you. But when you have no fear, you blindly trust that person. It makes you demanding rather than humble and serving. At times, this is an adverse effect of fear. Okay, when people are going through stress or fear, they act irrational, they get angry for no reason, they get frustrated for no reason. Instead of speaking, they'll be reacting. This happens generally in a corporate world where one department sends an email, drafts an email to another department saying that you have not done this, 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 and this. And the person gets agitated, immediately shoots an email, and that mail is shot with the anger and is irrational. So he's not replying to the message, he's not responding, in fact, he's reacting. It makes you think that God is insufficient or insignificant in the face of your problems and challenges. Fear makes you think different. It makes you think, it makes you doubt God, God's existence. It makes you search in people for what you, cannot, you can only find Jesus Christ. We forget there's a God. We start looking for people's help. I'm not telling seeking for people's help is wrong, but seeking for people's help, keeping them first, not God. What are, the, what are the fears that we have in our cities? So the topic, the title is, what is the title? Facing fears? Okay, so in your cities. So what sort of fears do you come across? Or what sort of fear do you get exposure to? Crime? Right? Robbery? Assault? Okay, we, we, we are so scared that we would, we are so insecure that we don't want to travel in a rickshaw after 12. And if the road is not lit. Sexual harassment. What is happening? This will only, the fear will only limit people's mobility and affect their quality of life. We are not allowed to do what we want to do because of fear. At times we doubt even the existence of our administration. We feel whether this person is, we think, is this person equipped enough to lead this role or lead us? Fear. The question is, what can we do about these fears? Uh, or how to overcome these fears. What does Bible tell us when it comes to fear? Now, how many of you like quizzes? May I see your hands raised, if you like? Trust me, you will get uh, goodies from the pastor, okay, post-Sabbath. I can assure you that. Okay, so I see hands raised. So I'm going to ask these questions, and whoever, is, whoever knows the answer, please feel free to answer. How many times 
the phrase do not be afraid repeats in by uh, rep- uh, appears in bible is this a match fixing <laughs> aksha very good answer so i don't know when you can get, collect the goodie you can always okay so aksha right 365 times it's mentioned do not be afraid second question okay how many times the word fear and terror is mentioned in the bible i don't want the exact number like how haksha gave 365 times approximate also will do but it has to be close less than you're smart but they are, you're still far okay over 200 times how many times the word dread d r e a d is mentioned in the bible okay pastor please be, please note i get all the two goodies it is over 100 times over 100 times okay last okay last question how many characters experienced fear how many characters from bible experienced fear all okay more than 200 characters you want to answer okay <laughs> so taking the liberty since i am presenting this message i would like to give another title to this very message and this discussion i was ha- i was having this discussion with one of my friends and that person came up with this title and i i liked it faith over fear faith over fear so till now we saw the title was what facing fear in your cities right now i have a good news for you there is a solution and solution is faith to overcome the fear is there a solution to something overwhelming us fear can we overcome fear these are the questions is it possible to live without fear minty is it possible for you to live without fear he says no people look for solutions and where do they go they go to psychologists for therapies i'm not telling people who are doing psychology you should do okay trying to change their thinking and behavior logically they they're so very scared of fear the fear has you know taken over them they want to see things differently and do things differently and we also have people who go towards the pharmacies and they take the drug the the prescribed drugs i mean to say medication but over time they discover that while these therapies and medications can help it does help they're not the only options these medication these therapies help but these are not the only options if we cannot eliminate or ignore fear can we manage them in some way the answer is yes now how is it according to bible we can overcome fear through faith faith is the antidote for fear faith is the antidote for fear bible defines faith in the way can someone read hebrews 11 one we already read that so if you have it handy if you know it you can thank you so what do you understand aksha faith is the substance of things you can paraphrase yeah which are not seen thank you in other words 
I would say faith is trusting in God. Faith is trusting in God. Hebrews 11.6. Hebrews 11.6. What does it say? I'm sorry. Uh, if someone is reading, you can read, read it loud, please. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So is it possible for us to do anything without faith? The answer is no. For it reads, as just Aksar read, 6, uh, sorry, 11.6 reads, I would like to read it again, but without faith it is impossible to please him for he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So if you say, I trust in God, you need to have faith. And when should you have faith? When you're having a happy moment? When you're having all gala time? When you're having these positive vibes around you and in you? Is that, is that the time that you have to have faith? Or is that the only time that you have to have faith? The answer is yes. Yes, you need to have faith then. When, when is the other time that you have to have faith? Facing challenges. When you feel that you're hopeless, you have no hope. When you're disturbed, when you're disheartened, when you're going through some loss, when you're going through some sort of rejection, when you're going through financial crisis, when you're going through a situation where you are unemployed, these are the times where you need to have stronger faith. So first step to overcome Fear is accept the existence of God. We in the church, we are here and we accept that God exists. That's the first solution I would like to bring it to you. Second, seek to develop a special relationship with him. How many times did Daniel pray in a day? We all know the answer. Where did Daniel pray? He prayed everywhere. He didn't even spare the lion's den. He didn't even spare the king's courtyard. Right? Importantly, talk about knowing God most of the time what we do is we put up this a show saying that I, I have faith in God. Okay, I believe this. I do this. I know God very well. Now, when do you say I know a person? Can I say I know Richie? Will, will it be right to say I know Richie? Richie says yes. You may. Now the question is, Richie, how much do I know about you? I know his name. I know his family members. I know where he lives. I know what he does. Right? I know where he worked before. Right? I know where he studied. Is that enough to know a person? Knowing a person is a lifetime journey. And knowing God takes the same spot. Right? I cannot just say today I know God. Then how much do you know God? Do you know God? Maybe I know him by the things that he has done. I, by, I know him by the readings that I've read. 
I know him by what I've heard from people. How much do I know him personally? Trust God completely. God will do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. Trust. Now when we think, when we go back the story, the first miracle of Jesus, which was the first miracle? Turning water into wine. Now here I would like to ask you, was there a situation where there was fear? Was there a situation where the people are there at the wedding were experiencing fear? Not everyone though, but people who were catering to uh, the food and you know, the guests. They were serving food and drinks. Did they go through fear? Yes, they went through fear. Right? But what helped to overcome that stage? Who had the faith? Who had the faith? Is it Jesus? Mary had the faith? Very good. Thank you, uncle. What, did only Mary have the faith? Thank you. People who were told to do what Jesus asked them to do, even they had the faith. Right? Many of the, many of the times we stick with Mary and move on. But if they would have said, what are you doing? What are you asking me to do? You're asking me to pour water to the jar and then the master of the wedding is asked to taste and he's, asked, he's telling people to go and serve. There was a fear, but faith overtook fear. Where else we can find faith overcoming fear? Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, Daniel's friends. Were they, f were they scared of thrown into the furnace? As human beings, did they have any fear? I don't know that. Okay, I would leave that question to you. But faith may show that you know, they didn't have even a small burn. Faith helped the lady who was bleeding for so many years. It was not Jesus who healed. It was her faith. That's what Jesus says. It's faith. And she was scared to even get closer to people. She was scared even to go and tell someone, this is my problem. That's fear isolating. She was scared to even go amidst of people because she would be called out and she would be said, unclean, move away. And she didn't want to face the embarrassment because she had faced it many a times and she had given up. But somewhere she had this trust in God and trust in Jesus that he, or she will be healed by just touching the garment. She was healed. It was not Jesus' faith there. It was the woman's faith. She did have fear. She did go through fear. But the faith overcame the fear. Do we have fear at times? Do we have fear? Yes, I'm scared. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. This is, uh, maybe I'll take a minute to share a witness. Recently, a uh, few weeks ago, or maybe a month ago, I was talking to my friends about my current situation at my uh, office, right? So I was, I was in a situation where I had to take this call whether I should continue with my job or I should quit. I was scared. I moved all the way from Bangalore to Pune to work. Okay, it's been almost 14, 15, 16 months maybe. Now I'm asked, I'm put in a situation and I'm asked to pick one, okay, whether you want to come to office on Saturdays 
or you want to quit. I did try to talk to my manager and I did explain to him about my faith, what I believe. He, he is also a Christian and he helped me and he's been helping me. He helped me in the past, he's been helping now. Right. But there was a situation where he's helpless now because this particular rule was put by the management from the top management saying that every Saturday is working. Before, there were two Saturdays working and two Saturdays I used to get off. So I'm, I used to manage my leaves accordingly. But now, all four Saturdays I have to work and I don't know what to do. I was scared. I was discussing with this with my friends. I was praying about it. I spoke about, I was looking for a job, a change of job. And one Saturday I did go to church, I did go to work, I didn't come to church. But I was not at peace. Next Saturday, I wanted to go. But I said, no, I'm not going to go. No matter what happens, I will not go. And trust me, on that very day, my manager texted me saying that this would be under DAC, Disciplinary Action Committee. There will be an action taken on you since it's a, it's a working day and you're not, you're not here in the office. And what should be my reply? I had nothing to tell him. I just told him, okay, I understand. That's it. I went to, I went to office on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I went and asked him, we're supposed to have this conversation. So he said, we will, the message continues saying, we need to have this uh, conversation with our top management. So when I went and I asked him, Are we going to have this conversation? And then he said, the others, other people are busy. They have something else to attend to. Wait. This is not closed. We will have a discussion. A week passed. Again, I had Friday. I walked up to him and said, Yohanan, I would not be coming to work tomorrow. And he said, we are not supposed to have this discussion. We have already had this discussion. Do what you want. Trust me, I was happy. I was damn happy that he didn't tell me, come to office tomorrow. He said, you have already spoken. I was happy. I was sort of, I had this sigh of relief. A week passed. I, I started looking, updating my uh, you know, profile, the resume on uh, LinkedIn, Nokri, and other websites. I used to get job, but not in Pune, somewhere else. But I wanted to be here for some time. I still want to be here for some time. <laughs> okay, so I want to be here for some time. So weeks passed, and I did ask my manager again, when are we having this discussion? He said, people are busy. And trust me, this is not by my works. Till date, I have not had the discussion with my top management. Praise God for that. I have not had the discussion. Now, will this discussion happen? I don't know. Has my manager spoken to his manager about me not coming to work on Saturdays? I don't know. But the good news is, I'm applying leave on every Saturday. And it is not approved though. Okay, it is not approved. But still, I'm happy that the discussion is not yet happened. So what am I trying to say here? I'm not, I don't know what is in store for me tomorrow. I'm scared. There's so many things like that in our life that we are scared of. But God knows what is best for us. Now, tomorrow, if my manager calls and says, we need to have this discussion and you have to take a side whether to come to uh, office on Saturdays or you, you, sh you want to quit, I'll pray about it and I will quit. Because I believe that God will help me. And God has blessed me to go without job 
for another two or three months. But I'm sure God will help me to find. This is a small testimony. And people were praying about it. I know Alan talking to me. I, Clifford, Cadwin, Richie. Everyone, Minty. Everyone, whenever I text them or call them, the first question they were asking, Bing, what happened? Did, 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 the, did, did, did the discussion happen? I want to say yes, but I, I, I usually end up saying no because it didn't happen. And I'm happy to tell you people it didn't happen and I don't want it to happen. <laughs> right. I'm thankful to God. No matter what happens tomorrow, I don't care. Now, during COVID situation, we had people scared of touching another person getting close to that person, maintaining distance. Now, there were few people who were called COVID warriors. And these people responded to the call, and they were there to help. The medical professionals, the policemen. So there is a time for us where we might see things are unsteady. There might be th days where we will see things are not working according to our expectation, and fear comes in. So what are we supposed to do? What are we supposed to do? Have faith. Have faith that the God who is in heaven can lead us. Because Hebrews 6, chapter 6, verse 10 reads this way. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 10 reads, For God is not unjust to forget your work and labor of love, which you have shown towards his, man, his name, in that you have ministered to the saints and do, not, and do minister. And Levin says, We desire that each one of you show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope until the end. So we believers in God, we need to have this faith that God will help us overcome the fear, the troubles, and the tribulations, the disappointments, you name it, which is not meant for us. God is there to take it away from us. It's faith which will make us win over fear. Amen. Happy Sabbath, Church. Uh, the song that we are going to sing, uh, some parts of it are familiar. And even if you know those parts in a different language, I'll really request the congregation to join in. 
and praise God as we sing this song together.
Good evening and a happy Sabbath once again to all the church members and all those watching at home. And thank you so much, Titus, for the wonderful message which you gave us. Um, I've just come over here to give a report of the Global Youth Day program which we had conducted uh, last week. We had an overwhelming response from each and every person involved, directly or indirectly. And it would have not been possible without each of your help, especially the church, the family as a whole. We had around 150 participants who took part for the activities that were spread out throughout the day. And uh, the activities that we did for that day were, we started off with a lot of home visitations. We visited around 16 homes Different groups went to different places where we visited elderly, the sick, or some members of our church who are unable to actually travel and attend and worship with us. So we visited around 16 houses, right after which a lot of our uh, participants went to orphanages and old age homes. We, on that day, visited around 18 orphanages and old age homes. And uh, in total, within these 18 orphanages and old age homes, with your help, we were able to touch the lives and help around 900 children and elderly people, all within a day's time. We have been able to help them. And uh, of course, while this was going on, we had also conducted major health camps in uh, two centers, one in Yerwada and Mukundnagar, uh, where we had many free tests which were conducted with the help of uh, uh, our, uh, our hospital, the uh, Adventist hospital. And uh, the tests we conducted were a complete blood count test, we conducted thyroid tests, we completed blood sugar level tests. We also had a lot of eye checkups. Uh, we also did blood pressure tests and uh, we also had a lot of dental checkups which were conducted on that day. In total, there were around 120 people who came for uh, uh, these checkups. And we had medicine specialists, we had gynec specialists, we had eye specialists, and we also, of course, had dental specialists on board with us to help us out as well. And with the help of the church elders, we were also able to visit, uh, the church elders especially, we were able to visit around uh, 10 police stations and around six traffic police points where uh, we had appreciated them for the help which they provide to our uh, community on a day-to-day -day lives. And a lot of times their help goes unnoticed and unappreciated. So they were very, very um, uh, appreciative of us coming and thanking them for their service. And last but not the least, we also had food distribution which was conducted on that day where we had uh, distributed around 100 food packets to various places throughout the city to the poor who usually we see on the streets who uh, do not have any means for their own food. So in total, we have uh, uh, the 150 participants had directly or indirectly helped the lives of nearly 1,300 plus people all within a single day. And we were also able to pray and worship with a lot of these people as well. So it was a huge success and it would not have been possible without the help of the church and the church board and each and every member as well. Thank you all for the support which you had extended to us during the Global Youth Day. And of course, a big thank you to all the participants who extended their help on that day to make it all part possible. And uh, we just have a short video uh, prepared where you can see some of the images. Of course, we'll be uh, sending out a more comprehensive video later on. But a short video we have uh, where you can see some of the things which happened in preparation on that day. And of course, the next day when we had our blood donation uh, camp as well. So I think we can play the video and you can all just have a look.
it was indeed a blessing. Uh, every Sabbath is, but the previous Sabbath was a special one for the youth of this church especially. I'd like everyone to turn their Bibles to First Thessalonians 5, 16 and 17. First Thessalonians 5, 16 and 17. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you and me. I'm sure all of us seated here are God's children. And God's will for his children is to pray. Not just to pray, but to pray without ceasing. There's a song, there's a song uh, that we often sing. That is one of my favorite songs. The second stanza says, have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged, but take it to the Lord in prayer. Now my friends, if I ask, do you have trials, tribulations, temptations, discouragements, disappointments? And if there is someone who would say no, then the person is truly blessed. But I'm sure all of us do, because we live in the world that is stricken with sin. But we have a friend, a friend who is dear, a friend who is always near, a friend who never forsakes us, a friend who will never leave us. That is Jesus Christ. I'm going to read this again. Have your trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged, but take it to the Lord in prayer. You know, I have read somewhere, or I have heard, I, I'm not sure, but it says, if you want to be taller than trees, you have to be on your knees. It is that time, my friends, where we all gather ourselves uh, in groups of twos or threes. We'll actually divide the church in sections and we'll pray for the requests that we have been praying for. Uh, we will pray for the sick. We will pray for uh, the situation in the world. We'll also play, pray for the situation in India, the political uh, situation. There are... Uh, uh, elections coming up, we have to remember our country in our prayers. We have to remember our community, uh, our vicinity, the campus, our families. But most of all, uh, let us pray for the sick ones. Let us pray for the ones who uh, need our prayers. And also, we will pray for one another. So I'd uh, divide the church, the, the right side and the left side. The first uh, four rows, then the next four rows, and the next four rows. We'll divide ourselves that way. And uh, the one sitting behind uh, from, from the center, from Joel to this side, Pastor will join the right side, the fourth row, and Dr. Nisha on the left side. So let us divide and pray. Uh, before we begin, is there any prayer requests? We have our regular prayer request. I'm sure everybody's aware of it. But any other prayer request? Okay, let us divide ourselves and we'll just pray. Also remember to pray for one another and the youth of our church. Please rise up and let's, let's pray. This is the time where we can be taller than trees. Let's get on our knees. Yes, we have one group on the balcony. All of you can join together and do. Thank you so much. We have very proactive youth over there.
it is so wonderful to see the church in prayer and to conclude our service we all will rise and join our voices and sing hymn number 499 what a friend we have in jesus after which the offering will be collected Let's pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, Lord, we are so grateful to you that you made it possible for us to be here as thy children, Lord. Father, we are so thankful to you that you ha- your blessings are upon us, Lord, and you are able to guide us throughout the week. Oh, Lord, we are so thankful for a friend which we have who is always with us. What a wonderful friend we have in Jesus who we just need to take everything that bothers us in prayer to you lord father so we come to thee with petitions we come to thee with our hearts filled we come to thee with so many questions and we have the faith that you will answer you will heal you will provide and you will lift us up as you have lifted us up lord father we are so thankful for this church we are thankful for the youth of this church we are thankful for the supportive elders and the church board members and and the pastor lord we are so uh, blessed to have this uh, building this church within the campus which is a refuge to us youth lord father we are also thankful to you for the many blessings the the healings that you have brought to so many people 
uh, within the community, Lord, within our society. But Lord, there are still a few who need. Father, we submit all of them into your hands. We believe that you are a God who is God who hears and not only hears but answers the prayers, Lord. Father, you know, submit uh, the Sabbath into your hands, Lord. Thankful for the message that came to us. We know that the antidote to the fear that Satan is trying to instill in us or Satan has instilled in us through the world is fear. But the antidote to this fear is faith. Help us to have the faith, the faith of Jesus Christ, the saving faith, Lord, so that we would, we would cling on to you and we would not be attracted to the world. Father, we will submit everything into your hands. Uh, take care of us as we return back to our homes and we come back tomorrow, Lord. May the same blessing be there for us and help us to come and witness it, Lord. We will submit everything into your hands. Thank you, Lord, for all the blessings. For I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's repeat the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power and the glory. Let the love of Lord Jesus Christ and grace of Heavenly Father and sweet come of the Holy Spirit be with us today and forevermore. Amen.